Good evening. I'm Spot on Weather meteorologist Matthew Euler. Welcome to the weather map discussion for Friday, 26 August 2022. Looking first at the past 24 hours of U.S. precipitation, uh, as you'll notice, you see some of these, the legend is here. By the way, this map is courtesy of the Kokoros Network. And there is the web address. If you're interested in joining to become an observer, um, go ahead and take a look at this website here. Generally, what we're looking at over the past 24 hours is heavier precipitation occurring along uh, parts of the Carolinas, specifically the South Carolina coast, on southward into parts of Florida, and also right along Interstate 10 corridor through the Panhandle of Florida, Mobile, Alabama, uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, westward through southern Louisiana, and down into Texas. You will notice another area of precipitation, heavier precipitation up into parts of western South Dakota. So that's, you, that's really where the heaviest precip has occurred the past 24 hours. Looking at the satellite and radar combination for this evening, Friday, 26 August 2022, uh, you'll note colder cloud tops denoted by these orange colors over the Florida Peninsula, as well as along the Gulf Coast. Additionally, we see some higher cloud tops, colder cloud tops, generally along parts of the Ohio River Valley from southeastern Missouri right into Kentucky, and then northeastward into parts of Pennsylvania, as well as parts of New England. Additionally, there are some higher cloud tops over the western part of Minnesota and eastern North Dakota, as well as some higher cloud tops across parts of the western United States. Looking at the latest radar image, for this evening, we see a lot of returns showing up across the western United States beneath these clouds that are enhanced due to colder cloud tops. See a lot of precipitation from Utah to Colorado, parts of Arizona, New Mexico, northward to Wyoming, into Montana, as well as over parts of eastern North Dakota this evening. And there is some scattered showers and thunderstorms along the Gulf Coast, not nearly as heavy as it has been the past few days. And right along the interstate here, Interstate 95, particularly Interstate 4 through Central Florida, uh, on up into the Jacksonville area in southeastern Georgia, there's a, a heavier showers and storms that are occurring this evening. And there is those scattered showers along the Ohio River from central Pennsylvania southwestward into parts of West Virginia and Kentucky this evening. And there also is some scattered showers there and thunderstorms along the New England coast. Now, there was a lot of severe thunderstorms earlier uh, this afternoon across parts of New England, including the Boston area. Looking at the surface analysis for today, Friday, 26 August 2022, there is a 1,011 millibar low pressure system generally located over southeastern Canada with a cold front extending southwestward into parts of of northeastern Ohio, including the Cleveland area, southwestward into southern Indiana, southern Illinois, southern Missouri, and then becoming a stationary front across parts of Kansas into western Nebraska. Another area of low pressure is riding along the front over parts of western Nebraska, and then a stationary front generally on the front range of the Rocky Mountains from Wyoming into parts of eastern Montana. We do see a 1020 millibar high positioned over Minnesota, producing some nice cool temperatures and dry conditions over parts of the upper Midwest this evening. Additionally, we see an area that is a weak area of high pressure that is influencing the mid-Atlantic states, as well as a frontal boundary there across New England, which is resulting in those clouds and showers. And then further south, there is a 1016 millibar low. Uh, basically riding along a stationary boundary, which is positioned off the Carolinas, and then down through parts of southern Georgia, right there on the Georgia-Florida border, and then extending westward into parts of south Mississippi, and into parts of Louisiana, and to parts of southeastern Texas. Looking at the 300 millibar wind speed forecast for Saturday, 27 August. Saturday mornings on the left, Saturday evening on the right, we see some higher wind speeds generally, if I brief this west to east, we see higher wind speeds there across parts of coastal Canada, western Canada, 
and that area of higher wind speed moving into eastern Washington. Additionally, there's higher wind speeds across parts of northern California, southeastern Oregon, uh, Idaho, and parts of western Montana. Another area of higher wind speeds across the southwestern U.S., and also over the uh, northern Plain states. In addition, there is another high wind area at 300 millibars showing up for Saturday morning across parts of uh, coastal North Carolina and then out into the North Atlantic. Some of the strongest winds we see are associated with the polar front jet stream. Uh, we have winds on the order of 100 knots plus there across parts of eastern Canada tomorrow morning. And that will continue through tomorrow evening across eastern Canada. We do see this stronger area, this jet max of winds there, and one of the jet fingers of that jet stream. Looking overall at the wind speed forecast at 300 millibars tomorrow evening, Saturday evening, we do see a new area, a new jet max coming into the picture, accelerated area of wind through the jet core across parts of western Canada on southeastward into northeastern Washington, northern Idaho, into western Montana. Additionally, we see some stronger winds there just off the mid-Atlantic coast into the North Atlantic, and then also across the um, central plain states into the upper Midwest, we see some higher wind speeds at 300 millibars for Saturday evening. Looking at the 500 millibar wind heights of vorticity for Saturday, 27 August, Saturday morning on the left, Saturday evening on the right, uh, notice there is some uh, pretty significant values of positive vorticity there across western Canada. We do see a shortwave trough extending from western Canada down along the coast of Washington State and Oregon for Saturday morning. Additionally, we see a little bit of uh, shortwave ridging there occurring across parts of the Great Lakes area on up into eastern Canada. And then over here on the right by Saturday evening, that area, that, that shortwave trough, generally pivots towards the east, uh, dives southeast actually into parts of northwestern Montana with higher vorticity values. Uh, additionally, we see some higher vorticity values on Saturday evening across parts of eastern Canada in the vicinity of Hudson Bay. Looking at the 700 millibar vertical velocity and heights for Saturday 27 August, Saturday morning on the left here showing some positive vertical velocity values across parts of the northern Gulf of Mexico as well as offshore off the coast of Florida in the western Atlantic. Additionally, we do see some higher uh, values there, positive vertical velocity values across parts of northern Minnesota and into parts of western Kansas and into the Pacific Northwest for Saturday morning. Saturday evening, we do see some more well-defined positive vertical velocities across Montana and Idaho into Nevada, even into parts of California, as well as the Central Plain states. Overall, we have a shortwave ridge that is persisting from the Tennessee Valley northward into the Ohio Valley, parts of Ohio and lower Michigan, by Saturday evening. Looking at the 850 millibar wind speeds for Saturday 27 August 2022, uh, Saturday morning, wow, we do see some stronger winds at 5,000 feet above the ground across Minnesota. These, these winds are really, really strong from the southwest. Um, on the order of 38 to 42 knots at 850 millibars, pretty impressive stuff. And then there's some additional higher wind speeds across parts of eastern Montana and then also into Washington State for Saturday morning. Saturday evening on the right shows that very strong area of winds at 850 millibars from the south-southwest extending from Kansas into eastern Nebraska, eastern South Dakota, into a large chunk of Minnesota and parts of northern Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan up into um, east-central Canada and then eventually into um, eastern Canada. Generally light winds across the mid-Atlantic as far as the 850 millibar level goes for Saturday. Surface wind forecast for Saturday, 27 August. Strongest winds on Saturday morning will be right offshore of the Pacific Northwest and off the coast of California. Uh, additionally, we do see some stronger winds, not super strong, but still showing up at 10 to 15 knots here across parts of northern Nebraska, uh, western Iowa into Minnesota. And overall, the rest of the country looks pretty benign as far as the pressure gradient and the overall winds at the surface. Uh, the forecast for the winds at the surface for Saturday evening, we still see that pocket of wind, higher wind velocities at the surface off the northern California coast Saturday evening, as well as over parts of the Pacific Northwest, and then over the central plain states on 
northeastward into southern Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin for Saturday evening. It won't be long as we make our transition towards fall in September where we're going to start seeing some more higher winds with sharper pressure gradients as we get into the fall months. Precipitation forecast, if you've got travel plans for Saturday, 27 August, this is Saturday morning, showing some pockets of rain across the Pacific Northwest, uh, northwestern Washington State specifically. Additionally, we have some scattered showers across western Kansas Saturday morning, a heavier pocket of rain across parts of northern Minnesota, and then also along the northern Gulf Coast states. If you're taking that trip west or eastbound on Interstate 10, you could see some showers on Saturday morning for Pensacola, Mobile, and Biloxi. Uh, most of the rain appears to be offshore off the southeastern Texas coast by Saturday morning. Saturday evening on the right, showing the Florida Peninsula once again lighting up with the green coloring, indicating showers and thunderstorms developing in the heating time, max heating time of the day. Additionally, we have some showers and storms across parts of Kansas and eastern Nebraska, and then also across parts of northwestern Montana and northern Idaho. The Interstate 5 drive looks really good tomorrow evening, Saturday evening. Uh, additionally, Interstate 80 looks good from Des Moines right on through um, northern Illinois and Indiana, Ohio, and right into PA. New England looks really good tomorrow after having some severe weather today. Forecast high temps for Saturday, 27 August 2022. You can see where the heat is really at. It's, it's generally located from Texas northward into parts of Kansas and Oklahoma here in the southern plains, as well as over parts of eastern Montana, western North Dakota, um, a good chunk of western South Dakota, as well as western Nebraska, northeastern Colorado on the front range, looking pretty toasty at 90 degrees plus. In addition, we have the hottest temperatures across the country, across the desert southwest, specifically the deserts of southern Arizona and southeastern California, through the hotter valleys of Las Vegas tomorrow, also up there, about 103 degrees for a high. Coolest temperatures will be across the Pacific Northwest, which is that's a nice change for the eastern Washington area. Uh, as they've been baking for quite a while, their highs tomorrow only between 75 and 80. And additionally, the cooler temperatures generally over New York State, northeastward to Maine. Looking at the forecast low temperatures for Saturday evening into Sunday morning, generally the coolest temperatures are going to be in the Pacific Northwest, with lows generally in the 50s, specifically along the Interstate 5 corridor when you go up towards uh, Washington State and Oregon. Additionally, the higher elevations. Low temperatures could drop into the 40s across the Rocky Mountains for tomorrow evening, as well as parts of the upper Midwest. Chicago, 61 for a low by Sunday morning. Um, right around the Milwaukee area, 60 for a low on Sunday morning. Green Bay, 57. Um, Minneapolis, St. Paul at 63. Uh, so the cooler pocket is definitely up here in Michigan. Look at Detroit by Sunday morning, 53. Starting to feel that touch of fall in the air. And it won't be long before these temperatures start becoming more commonplace as we get into September. Across eastern Canada, it's also very chilly, um, associated with uh, more of an upper low pattern, more troughing up there. And look at the southern U.S. for tomorrow evening. Very mild, very muggy, um, anywhere from um, southeastern Virginia, right on along Interstate 64 through West Virginia, down through parts of Kentucky, taking that Interstate 64 drive towards St. Louis. Uh, low temperatures will be in the upper 60s by Sunday morning. So toasty along Interstate 10, as well as Florida. Looking at the tropical update, now I threw these in tonight, the, this particular couple slides, because I have noticed over the last 48 hours that the models are really starting to pick up on some things as far as the tropics picking up activity, specifically as we head into the first 10 days of September. We do have a couple disturbances right now the National Hurricane Center is watching across the North Atlantic Basin. They are denoted, the centers of these disturbances denoted by the yellow X, and these are the percentages of development, the potential for development, um, over the next five days. So this particular disturbance generally has a 20% chance of development. Now the one further west looks a little bit more impressive. That actually has a 30% chance of development over the next five days. But we really need to watch the intertropical convergence zone across the Atlantic. It seems to really start to be getting active here over the next couple weeks. So that's something to keep an eye on. Here are a couple differences in uh, one particular potential tropical cyclone that the models are hinting at. Um, and they've been showing this on multiple runs now. The GFS operationals on the left, European operationals on the right. And of course, when we're talking Monday, September 5th, the Labor Day holiday, uh, when we're talking about that, we can see there's a huge discrepancy in the tracks. 
between the GFS on the left and the European model on the right. Look at where the GFS model has a hurricane potentially going, making landfall, and just south of the Texas-Mexican border there. Okay, Look at on the European model on the right. This is a monster storm here, 964 millibars on the European uh, operational model, the latest 12Z run today on 26 August. Um, that is a big difference in the locations of these two systems. So, number one, it's way too early to tell where this, and I got quotations here, potential storm could go. This thing is not developed yet, and uh, it's just interesting to watch that even the ensembles are starting to lock on to some potential um, areas out here in the western North Atlantic between now and 10 September. So things could really get going, and don't forget that climatological peak of the hurricane season on 11 September. Here is the latest 6 to 10 day temperature and precipitation outlooks uh, issued by the NOAA Climate Prediction Center today. Generally, look at this. It's going to remain very much above normal temperature-wise across Montana into parts of uh, Idaho, northeastern Nevada, northwestern Utah, parts of northwestern Wyoming. This is the greatest probability. 90 to 100% chance this maroon color, a 90 to 100% chance this area is going to have above normal temperatures between September 1st and September 5th. Um, and, and then as we go further east, we get east of the Mississippi River over here and generally across Texas, a higher probability of below normal temperatures across lower Michigan, including Detroit and Lansing, as well as parts of northern Indiana, South Bend area, as well as Cleveland, uh, even down to Pittsburgh, PA there. Um, generally looking at below normal probabilities for temperatures, uh, basically September 1st to the 5th. And then on the right, we see the precipitation outlook, September 1st to the 5th. Oh, a wet, wet situation here uh, in the southern U.S. That kind of raises my antennas a little bit here. Now, recently we've seen that a frontal boundary and multiple waves of low pressure develop along this. But could this potentially be because of tropical moisture? Now, that's something that we have to watch uh, for sure. Where does a potential tropical cyclone go? Because that could result in significant flooding and heavy, heavy rain. Look at here in the northern U.S. Ooh, very much below normal. Higher probability of below normal precipitation over here on the right from North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the whole state of Michigan, as well as parts of northern Indiana, Ohio, northwestern PA, on into western New York State. Uh, so this brown area indicates a good probability of below normal precip and much more above normal there in the deep south. And then finally, to end tonight's video, bringing it in closer to home, Hampton Roads, Virginia City, seven-day forecast. Looking at some uh, potential for some isolated PM storms due to thermodynamic instability, the heating of the afternoon on Saturday, um, the 27th of August. High temperature is going to be pretty warm. And believe me, folks, it is muggy out there. Oh, it was an extremely muggy um, running session I did earlier. And I literally, whew, not much sweat was coming off my skin on that run. I'll tell you that. It was muggy. Anyway, so high temperatures are going to be close to 90 on Saturday. Look at this. Sunday, we're dry at 87, staying dry pretty much the rest of the period, with highs 85 to 90 basically through Wednesday. Now, there's a potential we could see some showers. The models are kind of moving back and forth on this for Thursday as a cold front comes down from the north, and that will actually act to drop our temperatures down a little bit more into the lower 80s with a little bit lesser humidity by the end of next uh, week on Friday. All right, that wraps things up tonight, Spot on Weather. And don't forget, this is our website here at the top, uh, www.spot-on-weather.com. Check it out for all the latest updated forecasts. I've got a lot of cool tabs on this website. Feel free to take a look at it. Thank you so much for subscribing to the Spot on Weather YouTube channel. And thank you again so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch this latest weather map discussion as well as the forecast for Saturday, 27 August, 2022. Until next time, everybody, try your best if you live in the east to stay cool out of this thick humidity. Until next time, everybody, take care and God bless.